On day one, I spawned in as Bulbasaur! Oh no, only six hearts! And I'm not even an adult Bulbasaur? I can't tell what I should do first, grow up or evolve! I was a grass type who felt like he'd already been mowed! And before I could even worry about that, a large imposing figure rose from the ground! Somehow! Ah, uh, yes! A fine addition to my Pokemon collection! How did you rise out of the ground like that? Uh, are you a ghost? Oh, I'm a villain! And villains need a whole host of mysterious powers! My name is Bandit J. Warlord III! And I'm the king of Team Steel! Do you mean Steel as in Steel-type Pokemon? No! In a textbook example of nominative determinism, I, Bandit J. Warlord, love to steal stuff! Including grass-type Pokemon like you! I didn't understand all those words, but I know I need to run away! Run while you can, little Bulbasaur! You'll be mine soon, because I'll steal ya! I ran as far away as I could through the ebony woods, using the darkness of the trees as cover! Being a grass-type means I'm not easy to find in a forest! That's what you think! Ratatata bite! I was bitten suddenly by a ratatata! I lost several of my hearts! Ouch! Being bitten! One of my many weaknesses! There's more teeth where those came from! Now, let me capture you in the name of Team Steel! Or I'll turn you into yard trimmings! Not a chance, ratatata! I'm gonna make like grass and get the heck out of here! I ran around a tree and jumped inside a small cave, where I hid until the ratatata ran off, then I stealthily went in the opposite direction through the exit of the cave. Here, I found a hollow section of a tree to hide myself in, knowing that I'd have to brace for the possibility of being stolen tomorrow! On day two, I realized it was time to take my first step onto the property ladder, and the ebony woods were prime real estate for a creature of nature like me. Time to get all lumberjacked up! With my brutal bubble sore powers, I smashed down a tree, feeling terrible about hurting the environment, but knowing there were bigger fish to fry today. I made a wooden pickaxe. Then, because wooden pickaxes are about as useful as a chocolate coffee cup, I used that to mine up stone and make a stone pickaxe and sword. That's what I'm talking about, baby! With my stone sword and stone pickaxe, I mined up even more wood and stone, which I used to start building myself a basic base on top of a hill. Be it ever so woodsy, there's no place like home. I couldn't think of any other clever wordplay than that. But my joy at building a house with my own two hands was stifled by a sudden pang of hunger. My Bulbasaur tummy's rubbling, and I don't know what to do about it. Then suddenly, I was ambushed by another one of the bandit warlord's ratatatas. You thought you could get away from me, did ya? Well, that belief simply wasn't accurate. We went toe to toe, but this time my stone sword gave me an advantage. Soon enough, the ratatata was gone, and only a delicious rat burger was in his place. I feel like this is somehow wrong, given this guy was capable of higher thought, but also, needs must. I ate the delicious rat burger and spent the rest of the day relaxing in my home. On day three, I went to grassily gather more spooky supplies for my Bulbasaur base, which was like a normal base, but far more grassy. This ancient forest should do nicely for wood and stone. Let's see what I can find. I half expected another Ratatata to ambush me, but nothing could have prepared me for the truth of what kind of mob I would actually encounter. Raticate, Raticate, that's my name. I'm a Pokemon. It was Raticate, Ratatata's evolved form. You get away from me, Raticate. I'm not running in any rat race today. Oh yeah? Well, let me tell you something. I didn't get up this morning to pick a fight with the Bulbasaur, but since you insist, I'm gonna bite you real bad. Oh no, looks like words don't always work with Raticate. Time for a Pokemon battle, I guess. I drew my stone sword and clashed with Raticate, whose teeth were even sharper and more damaging than a Ratatata. Dang it, my current sword isn't sharp enough to win. I need to flee from battle. I ran away from the Raticate, who jumped at me as I ran off to another part of the woods. There, I met a Sandslash. That Sandy Sandslash to you. Oh, you're one of those Pokemon with a nickname. That's fancy. I'm not just fancy. I'm observing. I saw your fight with that Raticate and thought, wow, that guy needs a sharper weapon. And then I looked at my claws and remembered how sharp they are. They're the sharpest. Is that your way of saying you'll help me out next time? I like to think of myself as someone who is above slashing Raticate, but I would also like to see you win. You know, for your sake. Sure, you can tag along then. I've got a base in another biome not far from here. It's better to stick together, Sandslash. It's Sandy, Sandslash. From day four to day five, I returned to my base with my new, admittedly kind of obnoxious friend, Sandy Sandslash, in tow. Oh wow, you live next to the Ebony Woods. This place is a total dump. I'm 
go live somewhere else, jerk! Actually, now that I'm looking at it closer, there is an uh, undeniable charm. We reached my base, where I could tell Sandy was doing everything in his power to not make fun of my only home. I appreciate your restraint, man. As a way to thank him, I decided to build him his own room. Because we needed more space, we tore down my old base and built us something a bit more cozy. With this massive building, I had enough space to make Sandy his room, as well as an ensuite bathroom, so he didn't have to share mine. We'd work on making a cleaning rotation sometime later. Things were going great, until a whole gang of Ratatata descended on the base! Since Sandy was taking a long shower, I had to fight them all alone! Let's get him, boys! Approach as a disorganized mob, with no discernible tactics or formation! Unlucky for them, that wasn't a winning strategy. I soon defeated every last one of them, and besides harvesting their delicious meat, I also found a weapon left over. Whoa, an iron bat. I can use this to paralyze my opponents and finish them off while they can't move. Not very sportsmanlike, but effective. From day six to day eight, I decided I needed something else to eat at the base other than rat meat. I constructed a coop to keep some chicken as a food source. Fun fact, rat meat tastes like chicken anyway, but at least I won't have to defeat other Pokemon to have a good meal. The side of the coop was far away from the main area of the base, and I was grateful for that when Bandit J Warlord showed up. No, not him. Hey there, soon-to-be stolen Bulbasaur. I just stole this rad new scythe, and I thought I'd give it a couple of test swings on you, before I steal you, that is. You're really dead set on stealing me, aren't you? Yeah, I thought I made that abundantly clear. That's like my whole thing. Well, it's not a good goal, and it inconveniences me personally, so I'm going to stop you. I swung my bat into Bandit J Warlord, hoping to stun him with my weapon's power, but it didn't work. He was completely impervious. The then, it was his turn. The leader of Team Steel swung his ill-gotten scythe into me, taking several of my hearts away and giving me a debuff. My instincts are telling me that I'm not going to be able to win this fight. You have good instincts. Thanks. See ya. I ran away. From day 9 to day 10, I received some encouraging words from Sandy Sandslash. Things may look hopeless, Zozo. And heck, maybe they are. It's not like I can see the future. But... But? Oh, I was done. Anyway, follow me. I made some cool stuff for the base. Sandy pointed me outside, and I saw that he'd been working on something amazing. A statue! I couldn't tell what it was yet, but already it was awe-inspiring. I can't wait to see what it is. Can you tell what it is yet? Let me know down in the comments, and we'll see if you're right later. But Zozo, that's not the only thing I did around here. Things were getting a little stressful around the base. I'm not saying it's because of you, but I'm also not saying it's not because of you. Either way, go check out the upgrades I made. I turned and saw that Sandy Sandslash had been true to his passive-aggressive words. There were three awesome new upgrades, an adorable koi pond, a relaxing zen garden I could walk through to recenter myself, and also a furnace. Which isn't actually that relaxing, but it is practical. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah, you're lucky I'm here. From day 11 to day 12, I went on what I hoped would be a relaxing walk through the zen garden. But unfortunately, Sandy Sandslash also wanted to walk with me. Hey, Zozo. Are you feeling relaxed yet? It seems hard to do that when you're walking right next to me. I see. You need some space. Well, I too am growing bored of this interaction, so I guess I'll see you later. Sandy Sandslash walked away, leaving behind the comfort of the Zen Garden. I just couldn't seem to get a read on that guy. But little did I know that an even more unexpected intruder was disturbing the peace of the Zen Garden. Oh, not again. Bandit J Warlord. It's me, Zozo. But I won't fight you today. I'm too chilled out from this incredible Zen Garden. Huh, I guess it did have a practical purpose. On days like these, I just feel like confessing my entire backstory. Oh, uh, no, that, that's okay. It all started when I was a little bandit, born and raised by warlord parents. They told me, son, the best thing you can do is get out of this business while you can. And I said, nah, I want to steal things and or oppress other mobs for my entire life. It's everything to me. They didn't want me to become like them, but I think they came to accept me after I stole all their money and power. Wow, that's... I mean, I don't even feel bad for you. You made the choice to be a villain all on your own. Did I? I mean, with a name like Bandit's J Warlord, I think I was destined to go down this path of evil anyway. My parents were simply wishful thinkers. Dang, the Zen Garden is making us get deep. I spent more time relaxing with Bandit J Warlord, though we didn't talk. I knew the next time we met 
we'd be enemies. From day 13 to day 15, I decided that it was time to go fight someone, just to feel something. Being a grass Pokemon isn't easy. Let's go see if that Raticate is still being disagreeable. I went deep into the ancient forest until I found the vicious Raticate who was too strong to defeat earlier. Hey you, wanna fight? Sure, let's tango, muchacho. And so the struggle for the fate of this particular fight began. But I wasn't the weak little Bulbasaur I used to be. I was a slightly stronger little Bulbasaur. When I'd finally bested and defeated Raticate, I felt power flowing through me. I was leveling up and evolving. I'm not a Bulbasaur anymore. I'm an Ivysaur. I had 12 hearts and a new power, a warp ability. Now I can use my natural powers as camouflage. Bandit J Warlord doesn't stand a chance. From day 16 to day 19, I decided to complement my new power. I needed to get my newly minted hands on some real hardware. Stone is fine, but metal is awesome. I searched through the ebony woods until I found the entrance to an old cave. It seems like the kind of place where mysterious metal deposits like to hide. I snuck down into the dark using my highly developed ivysaur eyes to search for veins of iron. But it wouldn't be as easy as I thought. There was a swarm of Pidgeotos down there and I'd be putting myself at risk to walk among them. Wait. I literally just got a power that'll be perfect for this. I used my warp ability to sneak right past the Pidgeotos. They were completely oblivious to me. On the other side, I found some iron ore veins and mined until I had enough for a full set of tools. That's when I used my warp powers to sneak back out of the cave and return to my base. Thanks to the furnace Sandy had built, I was able to smelt the metal into ingots. And then with some wood I had left over, I made an iron sword, an iron pickaxe, and an iron shield. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up from a a wonderful dream, only to look out at the entrance and see that Bandit J Warlord was standing right outside. I immediately ran to Sandy Sandslash to tell him the bad news. Sandy, Bandit J Warlord is right outside. Oh yeah, I knew that. Wait, you knew and you didn't tell me? Yeah, well it's a lot more peaceful around here while you're asleep. Thanks for nothing, Sandy. Now I better go and fight him. With my sword and shield in hand, I warped and snuck outside behind Bandit J Warlord. He had no idea I was standing right behind him. Nah. Man, I can't wait to steal this dweeb. It's going to make my collection of Pokemon all the more vast and impressive. I bet that'd make my parents regret doubting me. I popped out right behind him, and I'll make you regret invading my base. I charged in, sword and shield at the ready, and we engaged in battle. I was so much stronger than the last time I faced him, and with my shield, I was able to deflect most of his blows. Soon enough, the fight stopped. Giving up, Bandit? No, not even close. You're an Ivysaur now. You evolve. You're even more valuable than before. Maybe you'll keep evolving into Venusaur. And then, Zozo, then you will be mine. He disappeared, but I didn't buy his excuses for a second. He was afraid of me. And for the first time, I truly knew I could defeat him. From day 23 to day 26, I came across a piece of headgear that would redefine my life and style in a big way. It was a fedora. I put the cool hat on my head and spun around to celebrate. That's when I noticed all of you out there watching. Oh. Hi, I didn't see you there. I hope you're enjoying my adventurous Bulbasaur. Well, the Ivysaur now. How do you think I'm gonna escape from Bandit J Warlord? I'm sure it'll be a wild ride. Remember, if you wanna find more of my other videos, search for ZOZO and there'll be plenty more for you to enjoy. I tip my fedora to you. From day 27 to day 31, Sandy Sandslash showed up to tell me some good news about the statue that he was building in his own Sandy way. Hey, Zozo, not that I'm really trying, but I'm kinda rock at the construction of the statue. You should come take a look, but don't feel bad that you couldn't build anything like it. Okay, sure, Sandy. I'll take a look, since you asked so politely. I walked with Sandy to see the statue, and it indeed looked like more progress had been made on it. Though, upon a second glance, something was off, and I didn't know how to break it to Sandy. So, what do you think? I mean, I already know the statue is awesome so far, but I want to hear you say it. Yeah, well, the thing about that is that part right there would definitely look better if it had some pink concrete to really give it the right quality. Well, yeah, obviously. But I didn't expect you to notice. I'm glad you did, though. That means you can go get some from the Oasis Beach for me. Oh, I, I mean, if the statue needs it, sure. But I thought building it was going to be your thing. I'm kind of trying to save the world from Banish J Warlord and stuff. You're telling me that you're too good to get some pink concrete from Oasis Beach? I'm surprised at you, Zozo. No, it's not like that. It's no big deal. 
I'll go get it. Great. I'll just be chilling here. I made it to the Oasis Beach and began to search for pink concrete. Oh, this place is so beautiful and tropical. Such a great place for a flowering plant Pokemon like me. A wild pack of Rattata appeared, so I fought them off with my iron sword. Usually the rats on the beach have wings. From day 32 to day 35, I took a dip in the water to nourish my leaves. Oh, so refreshing. As I swam back to shore, I saw a fire-type Pokemon staring mysteriously at the horizon. It was Ninetales, the nine-tailed fox Pokemon, hence the name. Oh, woe is me. I am in such a state of misfortune, and it bothers me quite a bit. It seemed like she was in a state of misfortune and bothered quite a bit, so I decided to see if I could help, even though I was weak against fire types. Hi there, I am Zozo the Ivysaur. What troubles you, Ninetales? It's nine Ninetales, actually, and I'm afraid that my Vulpix cub was kidnapped by an evil Beedrill. I think he was working for that bandit warlord that is kidnapping Pokemon. Wait a second, bandit warlord? Do you mean bandit J warlord? That's the one. He's been trying to capture me too. I can't stand the way he and his team steal keep on stealing everything. Hence the name. Yeah. Now which way do I have to go to beat up this bad Beedrill and save Vulpix? Go to that really unreasonably cool beach house at the edge of shore. You'll find that villainous bug type Pokemon over there. Oh boy, a beach house. I mean, you can count on me. I traveled to shore because I was sure to complete this rescue mission for Nine and Nine Tails. From day 36 to day 39, I came upon the coolest beach house that I'd ever seen in all my days. Wowie zowie. It's too bad there's a crime happening here because I could totally go on vacation right now. I decided to go stake out the beach house and find out where the bee drill was keeping the captive Vulpix. I walked through the sweet single room beach house equipped with a kitchen, TV, and a bed. It actually looked quite ordinary. Eventually, I found Vulpix in a glass container surrounded by ocean water. Beedrill was there too, flying around and looking menacing. If this water weren't here, I'd barbecue you with a fireball, Beedrill. You'd be a bee barbecue, a bee 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 too. Enough with the threats, little Firefox. Just stay in there until the bandit warlord arrives to add you to his team. Oh no, bandit warlord? Do you mean bandit J warlord? Yes, he needs to have a fire type and a grass type if he wants a balanced Pokemon team. Grass type? I said quietly while hiding. It was clear that Beedrill was talking about me when he mentioned the grass type. Maybe I could use the fact that Bandit J Warlord was also looking for me to my advantage. I could distract Beedrill and free Vulpix in one fell swoop. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. From day 40 to day 43, I made noise to draw Beedrill to my location. Whoa, is me, a grass type lost in this really sweet beach house. I hope I'm not captured in a container and given to a Bandit Warlord, Bandit J Warlord, to be specific. I could hear buzzing coming toward the room where I was, and it was followed up by Beedrill's annoying voice. <laughs> a grass type. What a convenient convenience for me. I'll catch him and put him in some glass enclosure. I waited until he was just about to enter the room. Then I used my warp ability to sneak past Beedrill. I had to be careful to stay hidden to get back outside where Vulpix was being held captive. I drew my iron and broke through the glass to free her. It's all right, Vulpix. Your mother Nina sent me to save you. Hooray! I knew Mom would come through. Just then, Beedrill flew back outside and was shocked to see Vulpix out of containment. Hey, what the? I was tricked. Bamboozled, even. I'd say you were Bambulbasaur zoozled. Actually, wait, I'm an Ivysaur now. I used my warp and fell back. It was Vulpix's time to get a little hard-earned revenge. I'm a Vulpix, so I can use my ammo attack. Vulpix shot a fireball at Beedrill, hitting him directly on and causing super effective damage. I decided to add injury to injury by rushing in with my iron sword and beating down the bug. With the enemy defeated, Vulpix and I found Ninetales waiting outside. Thank you, Zozo. You solved our many woes. Ah, was nothing, really. On the way back home, I was lucky enough to stumble upon a deposit pile of pink concrete. I mined up as much as I could and headed back. From day 44 to day 49, I returned to base with the pink concrete I had gathered from the Oasis Beach. Wow, you took your time getting this, Zozo. Yeah, it took longer because I had to help some other people in need. I guess I'll work on the statue then. Maybe you can do something else around here to make up for lost time. Sandy wasn't very polite about asking for things, but I decided he was right about there needing to be
be some work done around the base. I constructed a wall around the entire perimeter of the base, which was strong enough to keep out any ratatata. When I had completed the project, I went to go check on Sandy again. How's the statue, Sandy? Did the pink concrete help? Yeah, no, totally. I built that part that we couldn't have done without it. There's still a lot to go, but only so much I want to do in one day. I looked at the still very incomplete statue and politely decided to take his word for it. From day 50 to day 53, the base was under attack by Bandit Jay Warlord and his army of Ratatata! Go break down that wall, you worthless Ratatata! I can't believe I haven't managed to steal any other Pokemon besides you, Rodents! Am I just not good at my job? No, I'm great! At least after today, nobody will make fun of Team Steel! While well, Bandit Jay Warlord continued to monologue to himself, I drew my sword and began to drive away the Ratatata! Get back, you worthless rats! Oh, come on, not you too! We've already heard enough insults today from our boss! Sorry, I'm still gonna battle you and win, but I won't call you worthless. We'll see about that! The you winning part, not the we worthless part! It turned out the Ratatata were pretty good at one thing, and that was keeping me distracted long enough for a group of them to kidnap Sandy! I changed chased after the Ratatata that had Sandy, but the others swarmed me. It was a large group, and I couldn't get past them. Out of my way! I swung, and I swung until all the Ratatata were taken down. It seems all that grinding on weak enemies had paid off, as I evolved from Ivysaur into my next form, Venusaur! I had 22 hearts, and the ability to use a powerful grass-type move called Petal Blizzard. Or I guess more like an actual blizzard, since it looked like an Ice Blast. But it was still a powerful and dangerous move nonetheless. I am the wizard of blizzard. <laughs> From day 54 to day 57, I noticed that Team Steel had done a lot of damage to the base during their attack. So I fixed it up with whatever materials I was able to find. It was a pretty intense project, but it needed to be done. And it's not like Sandy was around to help me. This should do. Now, I need to find out where Bandit J Warlord took Sandy. I went back to the Oasis Beach to see if Nine and Ninetales was still there. She had some experience with Team Steel, so probably knew something about the way they operate. I found her on the same part of the beach, staring off into the horizon. Vulpix wasn't with her. Hey, Nine and Ninetales, is everything all right with Vulpix? Yes, Vulpix is at school right now. I'm just taking some time to enjoy the beach. I would be doing that too, but I've got to track down Bandit J Warlord. He stole my friend. Er, acquaintance, and I'll be next unless I can shut down Team Steel's whole operation. That's a noble goal, but woe is me. I don't know if I can help you achieve it. There must be something, you know? Oh, right. There is. Sorry, I forgot. I heard from some rock-type Pokemon that the big evil stronghold was built in the gravelly mountains. It has Team Steel written on it in block letters, so it probably belongs to them. That'll work perfectly! Thanks! From day 58 to day 62, I went mining. The caverns that I had dug were starting to get really deep, so I was sure to come across some diamonds. Just gotta break through this next wall and... Oops! I must have broken into an underground lake as water began to flow like crazy crazy into the open cavern. If that wasn't dangerous enough, the ferocious water-type Pokemon Gyarados came splashing in as well. If I wasn't a Venusaur, I'd probably have a lot of trouble with this fight. But now that I was evolved, I was unafraid. I froze the Gyarados in the water with my Petal Blizzard attack and hit it with my Iron Sword until it was beaten. Grass beats water. Past the now flooded cavern was a room full of diamonds, which I gathered and used to make a diamond sword. Fighting Gyarados with an Iron Sword was tougher than expected. So this diamond sword would become my new main weapon going forward. I did also make some diamond boots for some extra protection. From day 63 to day 66, I walked around the base and noticed how empty it felt without Sandy. As much as that old sand slash could be a pain in the neck sometimes, he always made me feel more grounded. Probably because he was a ground type Pokemon. Without him, I would never be able to see the base statue be completed. And more than that, I couldn't allow Bandit J Warlord to steal any Pokemon, let alone a Pokemon that had been living in my base. After all, I'm also a Pokemon living in my base. And if you want to be a Pokemon living in my base, or just want to see more of my videos when they come out, subscribe to the channel. Every new subscription is a chance to catch them all. From day 67 to day 70, I climbed through the gravelly mountains and found the secret base of Team Steel. That must be where Sandy is. I've got to fight my way inside. Any Ratatata tries to stop me, they'll taste my diamond sword. I won't taste them though. I'm done eating rats. It's pretty weird that I did that in hindsight. I approached the gate where a group of Ratatata were standing at the ready. Come and get me! Be careful what you wish for. We're in the top 2% of all Ratatatas, meaning that together, we're the strongest of the week. 
had strength in numbers, but I had strength in my diamond sword. I quickly and efficiently chopped them down and left their rat meat behind. Once I was through the gate, I quietly warped around and looked for an entrance. The stealthy approach is the best for infiltrating a secret base. As I was sneaking around, I overheard a couple of Ratatata guards mention the location of the dungeon where they were keeping Sandy Sandslash. I have my heading. Here I come, Sandy! From day 71 to day 74, I began to find another way to Sandy! I found a side entrance down to the dungeon, and I was distracted by a weird underground room. It looked like a small biome under the temple. I looked around, and I saw a shiny treasure chest in the corner of the cave. I guess a quick break for treasure won't hurt anybody. You're gonna wish you hadn't said that. All of a sudden, someone was standing behind me. I knew I had recognized that voice. It was Eradicate, but bigger! We meet again, you grass type goofus. This time, my hyperfang attack will tear straight through your armor. So it is you. How did you come back, Raticate? You can't kill a rat. Now let me at you. I'll eradicate you. Raticate bit me with a powerful hyperfang attack that reduced my heart massively. But I wasn't about to give up so easily. I warped to get some distance. Then I reappeared and hit Raticate with my pedal blizzard. Raticate ran towards me, but my sword attacks were quicker. I held on as I took damage, and eventually my diamond blade dealt the last blow! I warped up to the chest and opened the treasure chest to claim my prize after that tense encounter. It was a fresh set of diamond armor for me to wear. I equipped it immediately, then I went to go find Sandy! From day 75 to day 78, I decided to further explore the room below the temple. It looked weird, but at the end of it, I saw Sandy's prison cell. The sand slash was as grouchy as ever, but I could tell that deep down, he was happy to be rescued. Oh, it's you! I was just taking a nap in this dungeon, but if it's time for you to dramatically rescue me, we can head home. I've got nowhere else to be. Yep, deep, deep down. I broke through the iron bars of the dungeon and gave Sandy the directions to escape by himself. I thought I'd take a look around to see if there was any more treasure, but that's when Bandit J Warlord showed up. You! How dare you steal from me? I, Bandit J Warlord, am the only one who should be allowed to steal anything from anyone. And yet, you have it. You couldn't steal me. Your Beedrill couldn't steal Vulpix. And now Sandy has gotten away too. You just keep failing. Whoa, that's not very zen of you. But I guess the time for meditation is over. I'm going to bring the pain. Bandit J Warlord charged in and we began to fight. He was as powerful as ever, but that made me feel more confident in my chances. I had grown so much stronger since our previous battle, which meant that right now, he was the one who had no idea what I was bringing to the fight. My pedal blizzard attack shook him and my diamond sword continued to hammer away. I could tell that he was getting slower. This was my chance. Decisive blow, Diamond Venusword. A direct hit from my iron bat toppled Bandit J Warlord and he was stunned. I can't move. No, could it be that I lost? Seems that your life of crime is over. No, as long as I live, my crimes will continue because my name is Bandit J Warlord. From day 79 to day 84, Bandit J Warlord began to change into a bigger and better form. A Bandit Warlord to end all Bandit Warlords. <laughs> Tremble before me, little Venusaur! I am now Bandit Bee Warlord, the greatest Pokemon thief who has ever lived! Yeah, you definitely got bigger, but where the change in your middle initial? You're asking the right question, Zozo! The B stands for better than you could ever imagine! And you'll see that firsthand after I go relax in the Zen Garden for a bit. That last fight was incredibly stressful. Fine, but our rematch will be even more stressful, Bandit Bee Warlord! Yeah, for you! Dang, you got me! That was a sick burn. I better hightail it out of here! From day 85 to day 89, I went back to the base and told Sandy Sandslash all about the sick burn that I received from the Bandit Warlord, who now went by Bandit B Warlord. Oh, uh, that does sound like a sick burn, but I know all about all of those. Oh, I'll give you some help. With this fire aspect enchantment, you'll give him a sick burn with every one of your diamond sword strikes. Are you sure about this, Sandy? I'm a grass type, so fire moves aren't really my thing. Jeez. Please forget it then. No, wait, sorry. I'm trying to be nicer. I ran into the bandit warlord in the Zen Garden and we had a deep conversation about handling anger. I accept your apology, Sandy, and I think I'll use the enchantment after all. Once I made my diamond sword into a fire diamond sword, I went to go see the statue that Sandy Sandslash had completed in my absence. It was gigantic.
Gigantamax Venusaur, my most powerful evolved form. This was everything I ever aspired to be, but I was never able to achieve it. Till now. Sandy? There's a Gigantamax candy over at Oasis Beach, and if you can nab it, you'll be able to Gigantamax into your huge form and bring Bandit J Warlord down. Actually, it's Bandit B Warlord now. Yeah, my mistake, but still, that G-Max can't. From day 90 to day 94, I searched throughout the Oasis Beach until I came upon Beedrill's old hideout. That thieving bug used to grab all sorts of stuff back in the day. I'll bet if anyone had the Gigantamax candy, it would have been him. I scoured the entire room of his incredibly luxurious beach home until I found a chest which had to be the location of a valuable item. Jackpot. Before I could move in to claim the prize, some ratatata rushed into the room and got in my way again. That candy is ours, flower boy. We're still Team Steel, so we're gonna steal it. Don't you guys get tired of working for that bandit bee warlord? There's so much else to enjoy in this overworld, so why choose to be evil? You can't zen master your way out of this one. Fair enough, but why don't we make a deal? I'll take the candy, and you guys can have the beach house all to yourselves. Hey, you know what? This beach house is pretty great. The chest is all yours. The ratatata is left, and I turn to open the chest, gaining the Gigantamax candy that I would need to beat Bandit Bee Warlord once and for all. From day 95 to day 97, Nine and Ninetales showed up at my base in the Ebony Woods, and I was glad to know that she was still okay in the era of Bandit Bee Warlord. Your base is incredibly nice, Zozo. Wow, is me. If only I could raise Vulpix in a place like this. You really think so? Well, if you want to, then Vulpix can move in when all this is over. Are you sure? Oh, Zozo, I don't want to be too much of a burden. Well, I let Sandy Slanslash live here. How bad could you be? Thank you, Zozo. It's much appreciated. By the way, I was planning to give you a gift that would help you in your battle against Bandit B. Warlord. Nine and Nine Tails granted me a powerful suit of netherite armor, the best kind of durability in the overworld. Thanks, Nina. This will definitely keep my heart safe from damage. Guard those hearts carefully, Zozo. Bandit B. Warlord is going to try and steal everything. I know, but I've got the G-Max candy, so I'll take care of him soon. On day 98, I wanted to clear my head, so I went to visit my statue. It's important to relax before a big battle, and they say that a grass Pokemon can achieve enlightenment by being still like grass. And even though all of you watching might not be grass types, you could find your own kind of enlightenment by watching more of my videos. Search for ZOZO, and you'll be on the path to complete and total tranquility, or at least more fun and enjoyment. On day 98, I took the Gigantamax candy with me all the way to the Gravelly Mountains. Team Steel's hideout drew closer, and I could see that no more Ratatata were there to guard it. They must all be really living it up at that beach house. Good for them. Team Steel was now more like, eh, not a team, just one mean guy, and not even him for very much longer. I walked through the empty base until I could see Bandit B Warlord coming to meet me. You took everything from me. My Zen, my Ratatata minions, my middle initial, and other stuff. I'm sure. How does it feel to be on the other side of stealing for once? Not that I feel bad for you. You're gonna eat those words after I steal them. Steal this. I gobbled up the candy and grew to Gigantomax Super Size, becoming G-Max Venusaur. I had a whopping total of 100 hearts and powers beyond anything a regular Venusaur could dream of. Bandit B Warlord tried to take me on, but between Nine and Nine Tails' netherite armor and my Gigantomax bulk, he couldn't put a dent in my health. I retaliated with an enchanted diamond sword attack, giving Bandit B Warlord that sick burn that I wanted to return. Ah, I've been burned! There's more status conditions where that came from. You're about to be badly poisoned by my max ooze attack. I fired a purple blast of poison at the Bandit B Warlord, and he was poisoned forever. What did you do to me? This poison will hurt you anytime you try to steal something. So rid yourself of your criminal urges and live a life of Zen enlightenment. Curses! You beat me by showing me a better way to live in the long run. He laid down his arms, changed his clothes, and we both went our separate ways. On day 100, I went back home where Sandy Sandslash and Nine of Nine Tails were waiting for me. Without Team Steel, we could live out our peaceful days as free Pokemon.